Midnight Maker. Shh. Oh, sorry, babe. Mancraft 101, making Chesapeake Lightcraft's East Port Pram. I started out by drawing out all of the parts on Masonite, which is called lofting, by locating dots according to the drawings. These are called offsets. Then using long, flexible pieces of wood called battens, I connected the dots with a Sharpie marker. I started to cut out the parts with a jigsaw, but that wandered too much on the graceful curves. I settled on cutting them out the old-fashioned way with a Japanese pull saw by hand. These saws are flexible and cut on the pull stroke, so they're perfect for following the long curves on the boat parts. I also took the opportunity to cut each part out of masonite so that I automatically have a template if I ever wanted to make another boat. That way I wouldn't have to do the 10 hours of lofting. I could just rough cut the parts and use masonite as a router template. Once laid out, the parts are pretty confusing looking. I also had to use the router to make a 1 8 inch rabbit along the bottom edges of the planks to give it that classic lapstrick look. Make sure you triple check the plans before proceeding with the step. Make sure you don't accidentally try to build your boat upside down. Make sure you put the good sides together so that you protect the nice faces of the plywood and get a matched set of parts. You want port and starboard parts, not two starboard parts. The stitches can be made from wire or zip ties. This is an improperly done stitch. It won't pull the parts together tightly and can damage the wood. This is a proper stitch, good holding power and no damage to the wood. Now you can start stitching the panels together. It rapidly starts to take shape as the boat parts pull themselves into the graceful curves of John's design. Here you can see how the rabbits form the lap strike and help hold the boat together. Here's the boat stitched together. The beautiful thing about this design is that you can get a boat shape easily within one or two full days from the beginning of the project. I removed the stitches from the transoms to cut out the hand holds. Proper tensioning of all the stitches will give the boat enough structural strength to flip the boat over. The stitches are long, sharp, and in the way. Here's the tool I used to nip them off. I squirted epoxy mix with silica in between the stitches to hold the boat together long enough to remove the stitches. Here's the plastic spreader I modified to make a 1 inch radius filleting tool. Here are the tabs I used to hold the transoms on so I could remove the stitches on the ends. Then you can go back and make one long smooth fillet. Now it's time to add some fiberglass. First I taped off the seam so that the fillet will be nice and smooth for the fiberglass to make the transition from the bottom of the first plank or garboard. The fillet is made by mixing epoxy and wood flour or fine sawdust to a peanut butter consistency. Then it's carefully smeared onto the joint and scraped smooth with the filleting tool. Now we're ready for some fiberglass. I laid out the fiberglass, smoothed it out, and taped it up on the sides. Once you start applying the epoxy, you don't want it to move. I used those spurs to move the epoxy around and saturate the fiberglass cloth. Then I let the epoxy half cure or gel and cut the excess fiberglass cloth away. This step adds a surprising amount of stiffness to the boat. The next step is to fiberglass the bottom from the outside. This process follows the same basic steps except for the garboard is not covered because the cloth can't make the sharp corner at the joint. I just mixed unthickened epoxy, poured it all over the bottom and spread it out. The epoxy is the consistency of maple syrup. I used the squeegee to saturate the cloth and remove the excess so that the weave is still prominent. Once again I trim the excess fiberglass off once the epoxy has gelled. Now that the large interior has been glassed, I can install the interior bulkheads. This also gives the boat its final shape and makes it rigid. The bulkheads are tabbed in place, the wires are cut and removed, and the final smooth fillet is done. These fillets will show in the final boat, so make them pretty. The easiest way to do that is to wait for the epoxy to gel, then smooth the fillets by hand using denatured alcohol. It will save you literally days of sanding. The flotation tanks are waterproof for buoyancy. The planks are trimmed flush with the transoms using a flush cut saw. Then any voids are filled with thickened epoxy. Now it's time to make more interior parts. This is the daggerboard case which gets installed whether you're going to make it into a sailboat or not. Make sure to epoxy the interior of the case before you assemble it since you'll never be able to get to those surfaces again. The daggerboard case is then installed by screwing it to the center bulkhead with silicon brown screws and applying a large fillet to the bottom of the boat. I cut out all the thwarts for a test fit. I had to trim the slots to fit around the knees. Once I had the fit just right, I used my router, a straight edge, and a spiral up cutting bit to make the perfect slot for the daggerboard on the center line of the boat. This really makes the boat look professionally made. 
Once all the machining is done, a thick bead of epoxy goes down on all the mating edges and the thwart is lowered into place for the last time. Weights hold it down while it cures overnight. Now all the fillets can be made. The large radius means a lot of bonding surface area to make the boat super strong. The scariest part of the entire build for me was cutting the hole in the bottom of the boat for the dagger board. I used a dribbit extension to drill down through the dagger board slot to exactly locate the position. Then I used a jigsaw to connect the dots, followed up by the flush trim bit in the router so that the slot perfectly matches the inside of the case. I then eased the edges to prepare for waterproofing the exposed plywood laminations. If this one step isn't done perfectly, then the only thing the boat will be good for will be a Viking funeral. The next step is to make the out whales. These are solid wood strips bent and laminated to the outside edge of the boat for strength and protection. This is the step that requires all the clamps. This is the quintessential wooden boat builder's money shot. Once the out whales have cured, they get trimmed flush with the transoms and sanded flush. Now it's time to install the skids and skag. These help the boat track in the water, protect it while launching and beaching, and also keep the boat from rocking on the floor for the rest of the build. Each screw hole located precisely to install the underbody must be overdrilled, then filled with epoxy, then drilled to the proper size to isolate the plywood from water intrusion. The blue tape acts as a dam for the epoxy to cure in the holes. I added a rub strake for additional protection when dragging the boat up onto our rocky beaches. I spent the most unpleasant afternoon of the entire build on my hands and knees upside down while doing the interior fillets to seal off the flotation tanks. Now we actually get to work on some sailboat parts. This is the mast step. It takes all the load from the wind force on the sail where it transfers directly to the boat. It's made from solid oak and screwed in epoxy to the boat to make it bulletproof. This is one of the most critical parts of the build. The mast step must be located so that when the mast is installed, it has an exact 3 degree angle rake towards the back of the boat. This part of the design and directly affects how the boat will sail. It's easier to cut the gooseneck with the hole saw while it's still part of the sheet of plywood. Then you can cut out the rest of the profile, file it to its final shape, and ease the edges. This then gets glued and screwed to the boom. The lashing holes on the spars are over drilled and filled like everything else. The mast was laminated from three pieces of hemlock, which has no knots. Once the glue dries, the mast was run through the table saw to square up the sides and the edges were round over with a router. The dagger board, rudder, rudder head, and tiller also need to be cut out. The blades need to be fared with a belt sander to give them a foil-shaped cross-section to fly through the water. You can use the plywood laminations to make sure your bevels are smooth. Dropping the dagger board into the slot was truly a religious experience. The rudder hardware is precisely installed into the aft transom using the drill guide to make sure that the holes are square to the surface. The holes are drilled and filled wherever possible. Sealed with extra epoxy and lock nuts were used inside the flotation tank. The rudder parts were assembled using stainless steel hardware. Once installed, the rudder turns effortlessly by hand. I hung all the sailboat parts on strings for finishing. After a few coats of epoxy, most of the parts got two coats of graphite epoxy mix for abrasion resistance. I also did a large radius fillet on the interior of each lap strake seam to protect the plywood and to make sure the interior surface was smooth and user friendly. Once the hull had been sanded and prepped for the application of graphite mixed epoxy below the waterline, I had to mask off the transoms. The first course of masking tape was a spacer. The second course was the mask. When the first course is removed, you can see where the graphite will go. Here's the hull with several coats of unthickened epoxy, then sanded and masked off. Then the graphite mix is applied. With the masking tape removed, she looks really sweet. I also made a quick prototype for a dolly to walk her down to the lake across the street from where we live. It fits perfectly between the skids, which lock in place, and it fits between the seats for transporting. The sail was from a kit which I sewed myself. It was actually more difficult than building the boat. At times my sewing machine had to go through seven layers of Dacron cloth. I had to read the instructions several times and finally ended up with a serviceable sail. One of the many beautiful things about this design is that it fits right in the back of my truck to take to local lakes. I was so happy with my accomplishment that of course I had to make a custom t-shirt to commemorate the build and award it to the Wooden Boat Festival in Port Townsend where I was able to thank Jim Harris in person at his booth. All in all it took about a thousand dollars and 120 hours to build this boat. Please be sure to subscribe and like this video so I can keep making videos of all the cool things I build for my family. Thanks for watching.